August is Hair Loss Awareness Month, a window of opportunity to relive the debate about a health challenge which continues to affect thousands, if not millions, of people around the world. Joining us now to have a discussion is Ayo Otubanjo, a hair loss specialist. Good to have you on Newsday. Thank you for Thank being you. here. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. It's a pleasure. Now, of course, there are many causes of hair loss, whether it be hereditary or hormonal. But based on what you've found or what you've experienced so far in Nigeria, what would you say is the leading cause of hair loss? Well, I will actually classify those in, I think, three categories. Uh, the, the, the main ones are, like you said, the genetic uh, form of hair loss. Uh, the second most common form of hair loss is what we call traction alopecia, mm -hmm. uh, which a lot of women in, uh, in Nigeria, or well, certainly in Africa, um, are suffering from. Uh, and then the third is um, alopecia caused by underlying medical conditions. So those will be the three main categories um, you know, uh, of alopecia that we tend to see uh, a lot of in the clinic. Yeah. So for women that are actually suffering from hair loss, are there any medical interventions that can be undertaken? There's always a solution to hair loss. I mean, I always uh, emphasize that, uh, you know, early detection is key, you know, and knowing the, the signs to look for uh, is key, you know, which is why this uh, Hair Loss Awareness Month that we're doing is very important in terms of education and you know, dispelling myths around hair loss. So early detection or, early sign, or picking up the early signs are very important and there are loads of treatment options uh, ranging from just medication uh, through to some therapies that we deploy in the clinic and right through to the ultimate, which is the hair transplant surgery. And we are for all those in Nigeria. Is that available? Oh, it's available in yeah, Nigeria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. available in Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah. You already mentioned those three options. You know, the medication, the um, laser cap technology, which you do in yeah. Vinci um, Hair Clinic. But I'm wondering, yeah. what's the price tag? <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, I mean, hair loss affects every section of the population. You know, every demographics. You know. Unfortunately, the majority of uh, the items we use in the clinic have to be imported from the UK, from the US, and Dubai. So, you know, we all know what the rate of the uh, exchange is, you know, so the cost of medication and the cost of these treatments, I would say, is probably beyond the reach of the average Nigerian. Sadly as it is, you know, but that's just the reality of the economy that, we, that we're operating in. In the UK, virtually everybody, can afford what we do, um, you know, and there are financing opportunities, you know, to enable that. But unfortunately, Nigeria is not as developed. Mm. Now, you talked about early detection and um, picking up the signs early. Can you tell us some of those signs? Right. So, for instance, on the genetic uh, form of hair loss, one of the key things you'll find for men and for women as well is if you feel the texture of the hair fibers on this middle part of your scalp is getting soft like baby's hair compared to the texture of the side and the back that is a sign of what we call the miniaturization process which is the prelude you know to hair loss so that is the point where you think oh i need to go and see somebody about this and at that stage just medication uh, will suffice in terms of restoring the the situation well, I, had, um, I saw this write-up by a dermatologist, um, Bo Dr. Bola Agumbi, and she's of the opinion that we have a hair loss epidemic <laughs> in Nigeria, <laughs> especially when it comes to women. And she attributed that to, you know, relaxers, yeah. super tight hairstyles. Absolutely. Uh, so if it's an epidemic from where she's standing, <laughs> well, as, a, as a consultant, wearing the hat of a consultant yeah. that you do, what advice do you have for women? You know, the, looking good is not, is not cheap, I, right? I, I, I <laughs> wouldn't be. I how, wouldn't do you, <laughs> how do you make sure you don't sacrifice the health of your hair, yeah. even if you're still trying to look, you know, I, nice? I, and... I wouldn't go as far as calling it an epidemic. I mean, okay. that's probably a bit strong, you know. <laughs> um, however, yeah, it is a major issue uh, for African women. Um, and some of the practices that we have, you know, seen in hair salons uh, in Nigeria, very worrying, mm. very worrying. Um, I always, you know, wonder why anyone would sit through three or four hours of a tight braiding exercise, which is nearly ripping out the scalp just to do, and they end up with this massive headache. Well, the problem, the, 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 the problem actually starts from there, because mm -hmm. the more you pull, tug away 
at the hair, especially in that frontal bit, the more damage you do to the follicles. And that's why women over a period of time end up with that loss of hair in the frontal region. So just, you, yeah, I mean, everybody wants the, you know, to look beautiful. And we see a lot of beautiful black women like you ladies here. Uh, but, you know, it needs to be done with, within reason. Within reason. You know, when somebody's applying a chemical relaxer on your scalp, have you ever wondered, let me just have a look at the product. Mm. Just look at the product, see whether it's been approved for use on the scalp. Some of them don't even have the stamp of NAFDAQ, in the Nigerian uh, Regulatory Authority, or FDA, which is the US uh, Regulatory Authority. You know, and the people that are actually applying some of these items on your scalp are not properly trained and don't really understand the implications of what they're doing. So there's a lot that's going on, uh, which we would like to change, quite frankly, but I mean, <laughs> we're just one small company, you know, trying to change things. Uh, and talking about relaxers, is there any difference between a relaxer and a texturizer? Some people believe texturizers are milder, mm. you know, that when you use it, it's probably safer. Mm. Is, is that true? I mean, very much depends. I mean, the whole point about Afro, Afro hair is it's very difficult to maintain. We all know that. Uh, oh. I've got sisters and I know <laughs> the, the, the stress they go through in managing the hair. So it's very difficult to maintain. And so we need to change the structure of the hair somehow to enable us to manage it better. So which is why the relaxers and the texturizers are there. Whether one is better than the other, it very much depends on the product. I mean, I presume texturizers probably doesn't have the kind of dangerous chemicals that you find in chemical relaxers. So I presume on that level alone, maybe texturizers will be better. But that's just my opinion. Well, we don't expect you to know too much. You know, you can do relaxers or the texturizers. But let's take it back to the um, to those who have who are already experiencing hair loss. Right. And I'm listening to you right now and thinking, where do I begin? I can't necessarily afford to go to the you know Vinci Clinic and get a hair transplant. But in my own little corner now, how can I start to reverse what's happened to me? And it will not take a huge toll on my pockets. Right, okay. I mean, the very first thing, obviously, is consultation, mm -hmm. you know. And we are probably the only medical clinic I know of in Nigeria that do not charge for consultation. So it's totally free. So you come to us, you know, we'll look at you, we'll diagnose exactly what's going on, and uh, we'll come up with some recommendations in terms of treatment options available to you. It doesn't necessarily have to be hair transplant. I mean, that is obviously the most expensive, you know. It could be other things. It very much depends on the extent of the hair loss, it depends on the stage you are at in the hair loss process. So there's so many different factors, so many different variables that go into determining what treatment options are to offer you. So don't be put off <laughs> and think, oh, it's gonna be surgery or nothing. You know, yeah. there are other things, a lot cheaper too. Of course, we have some people using home remedies, you know, or herbs to treat hair loss. Yeah. I mean, I could name someone very close to us. <laughs> I can't <laughs> believe you're putting of my course, of course, of course we, we have people using cloves, <laughs> onion juice, rice water, and so on to wash their hair mm -hmm. to stop no breakage and yeah. thinning. Yeah. You know, yeah. how, how healthy is this? How well does that work? I would never put down traditional means of medication. I mean, because our fathers, our forefathers been using all these things and they, it worked for them. Unfortunately, there isn't any proven efficacy of some of these things. You know, this is the this is the thing. We cannot, there hasn't been any kind of research to prove that it definitely works. I mean, so whoever is using, you know, uh, some of the items you've mentioned will probably claim that, yes, it's worked for them, but the vast majority of people will probably claim the otherwise, that they've tried it and it's, it hasn't worked. So we need a lot more research, you know, which means a lot more money. <laughs> Oh, very interesting. No, go on, because you already <laughs> told my story, right? <laughs> Ms. Ayo Tubanjo, hair loss consultant, thank you so much for joining us thank on Newsday. It's been you. a very interesting thank discussion. You thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you.